Good morning, everybody. It's the Drive to School podcast. I am Pastor Goodman, the content executive for Higher Things. And joining us on the Drive to School is a brand new guest. I'm super excited to have her. This is Kelsey Clumbar. She is the online editor for 1517. She is a wonderful writer and speaker. And I'm, I'm really, really, really happy to, to bother her today. Thanks so much for having me. I'm glad to be here. Dude, I'm so excited. Um, I, I want to talk uh, today about something that I, I heard from you. Uh, that that's just, it's it's a really important issue. Uh, we 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 were talking, or I was learning about um, worthiness, especially bodily worthiness. Um, and it's it's a challenging thing for a number of reasons. Um, take it away. Uh, where where is this topic um, rooted in in society, and and why is that why is that hard? <laughs> yeah. Um... So I kind of have come to this topic from a personal perspective. Um, I think a a lot of my life, um, starting really kind of in high school and college, uh, I've struggled feeling secure and feeling um, worthy, the word that you used, in in a physical way. And I think that that's um, an issue that a lot of women and girls can can relate to. Um, we know statistically that that a lot of um, starting as young as 12 and 13 kind of struggle with that that issue feeling like um, they their bodies are worth something that their bodies aren't just you know um, something to think of negatively and in a negative way um, or as something that they have to change. And so um, I've been uh, thinking, I've struggled with that personally, and then in the last few years, been thinking of it from a more theological perspective, and um, it's interesting because I think in the last few years, uh, society has actually made some improvements in, in kind of addressing this issue and saying, hey, this isn't good that we think of the body completely in a negative way. Uh, what can we focus on that's positive about the body? And there's a lot of good to that, to thinking about, um, and I think a lot of good as Christians, we can, we can say, yes, this is good. The body um, allows us to, to eat good food. We can enjoy um, walking and um, being outside. And so there's a lot of good to our bodies, despite their imperfections that we can, um, we can agree with the world when they say, think about the positive, don't think about the negative. Um, but I think that, that what the world can't answer, um, they don't have an answer for is, uh, when those, when the body runs up against specific limitations, um, that we can't really reclaim as good. So we know that, um, despite the fact that there's a lot of good things that the body can do. And even the fact that God has created our bodies as good things. Um, we feel the effects of sin on our body. We sin in bodily ways. Um, and then ultimately our bodies are, are not, um, our physical forms are going to, to meet death. I know that's, that's like a, a really big, hard thing to say, but they are going to meet death someday. Um, and the world doesn't have an answer for those things. And so as Christians, um, we, we luckily do, do have uh, hope in spite of all of, of those limitations and in spite of the sin that we feel and experience in a bodily way. And this, of course, is found in um, the body, uh, the physical um, the physical life and the physical work of of Christ. And so, um, I think that that's something that we have to continue to go back to is, um, not only saying things like you're worth something and you're beautiful. Those are good things to say, but, uh, asking a deeper question of why, why are you worth something? And as Christians, we can say it's because of the redemption and, um, the, the work of Christ. That's huge. Um, because it's, it's a tough position to sort of be stuck in the middle. Um, I, I've noticed that like, yeah, there's, there's a big push for sort of body positivity. Uh, but at the yeah. same time, Instagram all seems to look about the same and TikTok only seems to trend one way. And so you can say positivity, but there's still sort of because, and also 
listen to what I'm saying, not what I'm actually liking and subscribing to. Um, and, and that brings a lot of shame. And then you go to the church and it, it seems like shame again is just sort of the overarching topic of, of how to look at your body, either because of, yeah. our, you know, we, we struggle with sort of wanting to, to be modest to the point where we, we, we end up being ashamed of a good thing that God gave us. And that's not mm -hmm. all right. And we end up wrestling with sins of the body. And so we look at our, as if this whole thing's there, there's shame everywhere. I look when it comes to body, but you talked about hope by setting aside simply it's beautiful because it's beautiful because don't question. And also uh, Jesus loves you. So always be perfect in your body and, and never, think, do, or say bad things, but th there is a hope that's found in the body of Christ. How do we sort of grab hold of, of that um, idea that, that, that Christ's bodily worthiness has something to do with mine? Yeah, I think um, a, a couple things. I think, uh, yeah, where we go wrong, um, both from the world's perspective and the churches, is not being able to call things what they are. Um, both, you know, when it comes to any type of sin, but then bodily sin or, um, bodily righteousness, uh, specifically. So, uh, the good news of, of Christ's work for us is the fact that he took on our, our sin and we can say, this is sin. This is, um, my pain and my suffering is, is an effect of sin. Um, this, this decision that I made in my physical form was sin and we can confess that and know that we're, we're going to be, um, forgiven from that. But then I think in answer to your question, the, the way that those are connected is the fact that, um, J theologian, John Kleinig, he's, um, an Australian Lutheran theologian. He has this great quote and he says, God never deals with us in a disembodied way, which I love. I love, there's so many, um, you can think of that in a myriad of ways, more ways. I mean, we could talk for hours about how that is true, but I think a, a couple ways um, specifically to think about is the fact that God uh, sent his son in a body. Christ humiliated himself into bodily form in order to live a life, to, um, to be physically present with us and then die in a physical way, in a historical moment, um, with particular blood uh, in a particular place. Um, and in that way, we know that the physical is very, very important. Um, not just the fact that he came in that form, but he came to, to redeem us in that way. Um, and then on top of that, uh, so we know that our faith is placed in a very physical um, way because it's placed in the, the physical person of Christ. Um, but on top of that, we know that, that God gives us faith through physical means. He, um, has tied his work all, over and over again throughout scripture to concrete physical means. And for us specifically, we know that we are given faith, um, through Christ's word, which are Christ's words, which are connected, of course, to water, um, to, to wine and to bread, to these physical means that actually give us faith um, in a way that we don't have to question. We don't have to um, worry about uh, if we if we are saved, if what we're doing is um, making us righteous, um, because He hands us those means in a way that we don't have to question. I don't know if that that answers that question well enough, it but. It does. Um, I, I love that. So God does not deal with us in a disembodied way. And so in the same way, like I'm not supposed to like stay up all night wondering whether or not God forgives me for the awful things that I think or, or, or even do. Like I know he died on the cross for me, but like it, it's also not just sort of a question of like feeling your way into heaven. Um, it, it's right. that there's a place where God actually cares about your body too. Um, yeah. And so in the same way that you're not supposed to lose sleep over what God thinks of, of, um, of your, your soul, uh, we actually get to recognize he has the same care of your body. And so that's going to start to redefine the worth, right? Like at, at the end of the day, so much of the, the, the stigma, the shame, the, the, all of the awful stuff that comes, it comes from what people are going to say about our bodies. Um, we, I, I remember, you know, the, the body image issue is a real thing. Um, and, yeah. and the world imposes its standards and we just want to be enough. And 
when we, 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 we sort of carry that forward into the church and we're told uh, these are all the things that are wrong with your body and uh, all the things that you're feeling with your body are, are broken and just don't ever think about them and, and you, you can't not. Uh, again, it, it sort of sets the body up as something to be despised and you, you would yeah. sort of want God to not have anything to do with that icky part of you, but right. he, he, he wants to save your body. He wants to resurrect yeah. your body. And, yeah, and that's something I think I kind of touched on, but not gone, we haven't gotten specifically to is when we're talking about redemption, we are talking about the actual redemption of our physical forms. There is this trend, I think, within Christianity and American Christianity, maybe specifically, where we, we want to think of the physical as something evil and something to get rid of. And we think of heaven as this, um, this far off um uh, space where there's ghosts floating around that um, don't have physical forms. And that's not what the Bible tells us. It, um, we're told that um, when Christ comes again, there, that we, the, the resurrection of the body, that we will be resurrected in our physical forms and those forms will be perfected completely. So um, we don't have to worry about them. They, they, we are going to be physical and yet we're going to be uh, so much more than what we are now, um, in a way that's very, very uniquely human and yet, um, perfect. So it's something that we can't fully understand yet. And yet there are descriptions throughout scripture of what exactly, um, that will be like to give us hope, hope in that, that, um, the physical will at last not be tied to sin. It won't be tied to suffering and pain, but it will be wholly beautiful. Um, because that is, that is how God created us to be. Um, and so how he, he is working to redeem us now. And I think that piece is, is so hopeful for, um, for, for students who feel, um, like they are ashamed of their bodies or they can't connect with their bodies or they, there's just something they want to, they want to change or who have physical limitations, um, uh, with their bodies. Uh, the, the fact that, that's not the way things are supposed to be. And it's not the way things are going to ultimately end up. I think that that was a huge revelation for me, I think, as a young person to know, um, I don't have to stand on this, this statement of I am beautiful, just the way I am. Um, Because that when you start digging into that, that's pretty shallow, because you know, there are things that you run up to, in your life that you, that contradict that over and over again. Yeah. Yeah. But I am beautiful and I am worthy, um, because of Christ's work for me on the Christ uh, on the cross. And, um, that's something that I think is, is deeply comforting that the world just, the world can't offer. It, it, it actually is, um, it's an entirely worldly approach too. If you think about it, it doesn't make sense on the surface because we always want to tie sort of bodily worth to either what it looks like or what it can do uh, yeah. but, but worth is never that it's, it's what somebody's willing to pay like that's, yeah. that's how I know how much my car is worth my car is worth however much somebody's willing to pay for it it doesn't matter what mm. it can do it doesn't matter what it looks like and so we can buy the same car and pay different amounts for it and it's worth different things even though it's the exact same car your worth it is not based on you know what your body looks like where you can earn um Acc- uh, acclamation or, or, or respect or, or lust um, in, in some cases, yeah. which is we want to be lusted after um, or, or it, your body is not worth what it can do. And so if you struggle with disability, your body is worth what was paid for you, the, the blood of Jesus, which is yeah. more. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great, that's a great uh, metaphor. I like thinking of it that way. That's great. So when we're, we're starting to struggle with body image issues because this is an ongoing thing this isn't a oh I heard the gospel and Jesus loves me so now I won't worry about being overweight now I won't worry about being short what do I do when I continue to struggle to look in the mirror yeah I think um yeah those struggles are gonna continue to come and you know we know that healing uh physical healing isn't promised in this life we can hope for that we can pray for that um that's the unique struggle that you have but um, that's not, and that's not the ultimate guarantee that we, we have in Christ. Um, so I think when those struggles come, knowing that, uh, or going to, um, church, being a part of a community where you hear the gospel, um, which, you know, is going to be specifically that, um, Christ 
is working to redeem you, that Christ has forgiven you. Um, hearing those things in a, uh, like consistently um, on a weekly basis is, is really, really helpful. Um, knowing that you can, that, that God cares about you, even, I think it's this, it's this tension of both hands. When God looks yeah. at you, what he sees is his son's righteousness. Um, he doesn't see the way that you see your body. And there's something that's very comforting about that. But at the same time, that doesn't mean you can't go to God with these insecurities or with um, the shame and the sin, because he does care about that as well. Um, he wants you, he wants you to, to go to him when you're feeling um, down about your physical self. That's, that's not something that he doesn't want to hear about. Um, so knowing that you can, you can always go to him um, in prayer. You can always confess those things. Um, and he is more than willing to not only listen, but forgive you of the times that um, you've made an idol of your body or you've uh, not trusted in him. I think that that's, that's also something to remember. Um, and, and he can, you can do that because again, he, when he sees you, all he sees is um, you cloaked in his son's righteousness. That's so important. You made a, a, a very subtle connection that I just kind of want to tug on a little bit because it, it's, it's, it's beautiful. We talk a lot about taking our guilt to Jesus, but you said we can take our shame to him too. And those aren't necessarily always going to be treated the same way, but, but he bore both. Uh, yeah. I know that Christ bore my, my sins in his body on the tree, that my guilt is atoned for there. And so Jesus was uh, willingly punished for bad things that I thought did and sad and didn't do. But also I have a place to take my shame because he bore my shame too. Yeah. He and his body was ridiculed and laughed at, not just so that he can say, I, I know how that feels, yeah. that's awful, we'll get through it, but that I actually then have a, a value that is cloaked in his resurrection. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think that that's, um, that's important to remember. Um, and and it's, it's not just guilt and not just shame. It's, um, it's also pain and suffering that may have been inflicted on you. I, like, there are so many people that have been through uh, traumatic situations that they've had no control over. And I think um, knowing that, that um, Christ redemption is big enough um, to heal that, to promise you um, whether it's in this life or the next, that that is no longer going to exist. And at the same time that he um, he's listening to you and he cares that, that, you have had to suffer that pain is also really, really important and, and helpful. I love that. So guilt is not something to, to pretend you don't have. It's something to take to Jesus. And shame is not something to just will away, but it's something to take to Jesus. And then when we, when we go to him with just even coping with the day-to-day -day life, this is not a now carried on your own. But again, we, we, we lay these things before the Lord and recognize that he feeds us in body and blood. He, he carries us uh, in an identity in our baptism that's already holy and already cloaked in, in his righteousness and already then bears the marks of the resurrection. Yeah. I think um, maybe just, I have one more question for you before we go. Yeah. Uh, what do you think it means that the risen Lord after conquering shame and guilt and, and even death itself still had holes in his hands? I, oh man, I don't know. I've been, I've been thinking about that. Um, I, I think that it's, I don't know. I don't know if I have, a good answer. I think it could point us to the fact that, um, that he is, he is a redeemer that he has, um, taken what so can be so hard about life in this fallen world. And he's uh, used it or he's reclaimed it for his good. Um, yeah. I don't know. Do you have an answer for that? No, I like that. I mean, it, it takes something that on Good Friday was so gory and yeah. it makes it beautiful by Easter. Yeah. Um, like I, I remember, you know, that the, the week after Easter uh, and everybody's just sort of finally trying to recuperate and we've, we've got like Jesus uh, and Thomas and, and all of a sudden we, we have Thomas and, and all of his frustration being comforted by the very same things that would be hideous before. Um, let yeah. Jesus still carry these things. And, 
yeah, even in, in I, the resurrection. Yeah, it's almost too like a reminder that um, that that God that pain isn't yes the the memory and the reality of pain is is wiped away in the resurrection, um, but that He wants us to to know that He cares so much about the physical that He's not gonna. Um, completely wipe it away. I don't know if that makes sense. Like he's, he's so tied to the stuff of creation, the stuff that he created that, um, he's remaking it. He's, he's reclaiming it. He's not wiping the slate completely clean to create something that we have no idea about. He's saying, no, this is still, you, you still have, um, these wounds that I healed. Christ still has these wounds that I healed. He still has this physical form, but now it's, it's, I've, I've reclaimed it as, as mine. It's completely good. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, um, he, he has these things that he won't just say, pretend they're not there, but he'll say, yeah. I will make them beautiful in a way that all of the body positivity movements ascribe to, but actually happens that they don't bind him anymore. They're mm-hmm. there, but they don't bind him. Um, all, all the things that, that keep us up at night, they, they become a prison to us, um, a, a prison that, that won't let us look in a mirror, a prison that won't let us go in public wearing certain clothes uh, because we're afraid of what people will think. And, and you can still see the thing, but it, it's, it's no longer a prison for him. It, it, it's it's yeah. now a mark of, of victory. Um, you, you can yeah. look at these things and say, all right, these two, Christ will turn into beauty and none of them will be able to hold it back. Yeah, I think that's very well said. I like that a lot. That's cool. Kelsey, thanks so much for joining us on the Drive to School podcast. It was really great to have you. Thanks so much for having me.